I'm Troy Kirby with my Edmonds News with a quick look at the 2021 Washington State Legislative Session. Substitute Senate Bill 5273, sponsored by Senator Jesse Solomon, concerning shoreline armoring, was heard on the Senate floor. Uh, I unfortunately rise in opposition to this bill uh, this morning because uh, fundamentally it is a good idea. Um, you know, we all, regard, regardless of politics, care about environment in the state of Washington. We care about salmon in the state of Washington. It's really a part of our culture. But Mr. President, other things are part of our culture, like collaboration, listening to people around the state, balance as we approach policy within our state. And this is where this bill falls short. Legislation is only about when a when a armoring needs to be replaced. Nobody's no state agency or nonprofit group is going to go out in a, and attempt or require people to replace their armoring or their bulkheads with least intrusive stuff. This is only in an instance where something has to be replaced. So if there's hard armoring that's currently working, it's going to stay in place and continue to work. And it's easy to imagine that uh, the, all of these homes are. Um, rich people living on waterfront property, but that's not really the case. Many of these homes are, are modest homes, and it's important that we preserve the, the habitats, if you will, of the people who live in them too. When I was a little girl growing up on Fidalgo Island, I remember my grandfather going smelt fishing. Uh, it used to be a big derby that they did every year where they'd go out and get all those, those forage feeder uh, fish. And that started to wane over time. And part of that is because of the way that we've dealt with the armoring uh, on our shoreline communities. So this is not just about salmon, this is about the little guys, it's about the whole web that we're trying to support in our ecosystems. We've talked a lot already about um, making it easier for landowners to, to meet the, the requirements under this proposed bill. This amendment simply says, take the cost into account when we're looking at the feasibility of a project. Um, I've been in uh, the commercial fishing industry for over 50 years. And I uh, worked on habitat projects uh, most all that those years. And, and uh, really, this bill doesn't really protect habitat unless it's strictly uh, beach spawners, uh, salmon beach spawners. It, it doesn't make sense, this amendment, um, because uh, uh, depending on the design or the location of the materials, there's other characteristics of the replacement project um, that may have less impact on existing hard armoring. Um, which is the purpose of the legislation to find alternatives for bank protection while having less harmful impact to fish. It's actually in my wheelhouse what I do on a professional basis. And I've been involved with some of the replacement for uh, some of this armoring along the shorelines and some other uh, methods, both natural and uh, using vegetation and using other, uh, other sources to put it more into a more natural uh, uh, shoreline protection and removing this, what we would describe as hard armoring. But in some cases, all this amendment simply does, and I'm hoping Senator uh, uh, Solomon will uh, go along with it. It's pretty simple. It just says fish and wildlife should say, you know what, if we leave this existing uh, uh, hard armoring in place, that the replacement would actually have more of an impact. We actually know and we have heard from scientists themselves that sometimes the challenge of removing structures and replacing the things, you know, with the next generation of, of things that allow habitat to grow and our aquatics to survive is that there is that period of time where, where the impact can be quite substantial because if you think about removing that hard armoring, you are disturbing that ground, you are disturbing that sediment. The landowner's engineer's assessment will be given, I think, proper weight uh, by the Department of Fish and Wildlife engineers when they review project alternatives. But to put in a statute a requirement that the agency can't even question uh, the engineering results or analyzation um, from, from an engineer that's been hired by the landowner uh, is not a recipe for good policy. SSB 5273 passed the Senate 2821, moving on to the House for consideration. Thank you for watching the Daily Legislative Report by My Edmonds News, covering the 2021 legislative session.